period, blood, bleeding, menstruation. This is Tedin from Kuzu FM and I'm Pemsi from Yuong and welcome to our second episode of Hashtag Girl Talk where we will be talking about your period. Before we start, we would like to thank you all for a wonderful reception of our first episode. We got your messages, we got your emails. Thank you so much. Menstruation is a normal biological process but in so many parts of the world, it is still seen as something to be ashamed of or even considered dirty. So in this episode, we talk about how little we know about how menstruation works, how little we talk about it, and why awareness is important. For instance, did you know that there's so many other menstrual products apart from the plastic pads? All in today's episode. So what are we waiting for? Menstruation is a normal biological process and a key sign of reproductive health. Yet in many places around the world, it is still treated as something to be ashamed of. A study from UNICEF revealed that one out of three girls in South Asia knew nothing about menstruation prior to getting it, while a significant percentage of girls in our region believed that menstruation is a disease. I had no idea about menstruation and all. It was when I was in class 8, I was just 11 years old and that time I thought I was bitten by a leech. Even the girls at school, when they have menstruation, they don't even move out of their seats. They're so scared that it will leak out and it will be like on the kira. They just like stay on, like and on the chair. And again, they ask whether there's a stain or, or not. not yeah. Yeah. I did not know what period was because my mom thought that I was too young. So she didn't tell me anything because she got her periods quite late. So suddenly, I went, uh, suddenly I got my period and I did not know. I kind of started crying because I was really nervous. I did not know what was happening. The whole myth about how if you sit next to a girl with her beard that you will get sleepy and all that, I um, I get really frustrated at the same time sad up to start to know about it because that is when you feel ashamed about it yourself. Growing up in a Muslim family and going through these uh, issues, it was, I, I won't say it was really difficult, but it was kind of mentally tiring. It was never like too strict or stringent, like you shouldn't be doing this or that. But uh, certain things through people's behavior or actions that made you feel guilty of having your periods. I had a lot of questions because my mom used to say, okay, just like your know, period blood smells very bad, you know. So I had to be very conscious, I used deodorants, you know. My mother said, okay, period time, if you have sex, then the, the one with whom you are having sex will go blind. I don't know whether it's, it's, it's a myth, you know, so, Then there was one more thing, you know, and that was so funny. Okay, period time, now you lose so much blood. So I look pay low, so I have to stuff in a lot of food. I wish, on behalf of all of my girls out there, I wish that society would sort of normalize it, talk about it more, open up about it, because it would be so convenient for us to just tell our brother or our dad or our boyfriend to go to a shop and get it for us and not have it wrapped in 10 layers of paper. It would be so much more comfortable for us just to talk about it, because we, we can't help it, you know, it's natural. Maybe in urban area, maybe girls might be well prepared or have information. But in especially in place like Samsi, where I was growing up, we didn't have much information on the you know like menstrual hygiene. Even though many girls know what menstruation is, there were still a lot of misconceptions and questions about it. So we headed straight to seek expert advice. Menstruation is a very natural, so there's nothing a girl cannot do during her menstruation. She can play games, she can go swimming, she can have a bath, she can go trekking. So menstruation should not restrict a girl about 30 to 40 ml. So that comes about just a few tablespoons of blood, a whole period. So ideally you bleed for two to seven days. So painful periods is basically, there's a chemical called prostaglandin which is released by by the body so this prostaglandin causes the uterus to contract and relax so because of that you can have painful periods which is normal for the painful periods you can take just uh, over-the-counter drugs you can take like paracetamol you can take about two paracetamol three times a day or one tablet of paracetamol three times a day we can take brufin we have something called as methodemic acid these one but especially if you take brufin and methodemic acid you have to take uh, try not to take on empty stomach then at home, if the pain is not so bad, you can just even get a hot water bag and put it on your 
lower abdomen. All girls, we have to remember that menstruation is a very natural process. So instead of uh, shying, shying away from it, you have to embrace it. It's like us, like Mother Nature. So it's part of being a woman. Did you know that there is Menstrual Hygiene Day? It is celebrated every year on May 28th around the world with the aim to break the silence around menstruation. In 2018, Menstrual Hygiene Day was observed in a big way through the Menstrual Hygiene Bhutan campaign organized by the Ministry of Education. Actually, Ministry of Education uh, wanted to do something on the Menstrual Hygiene Day, uh, that is advocacies and things like that. And that's how I came in the picture uh, to do something creative. So then we got together and after brainstorming we thought how about doing like an online campaign because I mean today's time everybody is online. We came up with this red band thing so they would tie the red band on their arm and uh, that became like a symbol of it. And then without us even talking about it, schools across Bhutan started sending in their pictures and their story. So everyone was kind of doing a drive on their own and then they started sending stories to us from all across. And uh, that's how actually the campaign took off. It started from us, maybe two, three, four people, uh, but uh, eventually it became everyone's campaign. So uh, When we celebrated the day together, it was so amazing that men came forward and shared the experience of how they also had some of the challenges with their wives and daughters at home. So I guess uh, bringing men on board and the boys on board and sharing this issue openly is no more a shy away zone anymore for all of us here. One of the key factors that many realized about studying awareness was how the campaign needed to start from home. Right now the conversation between the parents and children are normally in school, normally with regard to the academic performances, their relation in the school. So if the parents could, you know, change the nature of the conversation, at times, you know, ask some random questions like, how are you? How are you, how, are you yourself lately? So tell me, son, what is happening in your life? Are you dating someone? So these, these type of questions, no, it, it looks very simple, but it has intense meaning, and intense any sentiments. It, uh, Duba. So the nature of conversation should not be just confined with academic achievement and the friend circle. Rather, how are their children? They find this topic very sensitive that they don't want to talk about it. Moreover, we are all Bhutanese and we know that we have that kind of, I mean, tradition and culture where a daughter cannot open up to, especially to her father. A son cannot open up to her to his mother, like in terms of talking about such kind of to uh, sensitive topics. It's advantage for me that I was close to my dad and then he could support me in everything. But then at the same time, just because of so social norms that we have been mentioning time and again. So because of that reason, he did not uh, tell me not to share about period. But then I was reluctant and then there was some kind of courtesy within me that was holding me holding me back not to share those things because he is your dad and then he belongs to a different gender. Periods can be a lot of things. They can be annoying and sometimes stressful and painful. But one thing period is not, is it's not shameful. And I, I think it's very important for our father and our brothers to know about this. Uh, when I went to the hospital for uh, like my stomach checking the doctor personally asked me if my period was irregular because he knew my dad was standing um, behind him but my dad heard this and he just shouted from the back that yes she has she her periods are irregular so i felt very happy at that time because the doctor thought that uh, i was not really open with my father but then my, when my father burst out like that from behind i was quite happy it's not just the mothers or female members in a family that have the crucial role in the healthy development of their adolescent children. That means brothers and fathers need to be part of the conversation too. I don't uh, directly talk about this to my daughter because she's still young and uh, I'm sure I'll talk when it, the time comes. But because uh, I subtly uh, let her know that this uh, very normal thing, it's in fact a miracle, you know for women to be able to have this uh, type of a thing, life-giving force. But uh, uh, since I don't talk directly, I do it in a very uh, subtle ways like going for shopping and buying sentry pad for my wife. 
and when the shop uh, covers it up in some newspaper or black plastic I say it's okay give it to me I take it in the hand and uh, then because she sees me like this I'm sure she's getting some uh, idea about this and at home also we keep a bat bin because I'm doing this in all public toilets or intending to do in all public toilets so at home also we keep a bat bin with the plastic lining inside so where my wife will uh, dispose her used <coughs> bat and she sees all this and uh, I was happy to know that she was asking questions about all this to my wife okay. and uh, I think they had a very good conversation and I also joined in to give her more insight into this in my head I am thinking that I'll be a friend with her I hope that I'd have a friend-like relationship with her so that I could talk talk about it without any hesitation yeah I would definitely want to have that talk with my daughter someday, but not right now. <laughs> She's too small right now. I don't want her to grow. But anyway, she will grow, and when the, she, uh, the time is right, I will be a responsible father and talk to my daughter. I've watched menstruation. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of part one of episode two on menstruation. Stay tuned for part 2 as we take you through more important information about your period.